This tutorial will explain automation in Caustic. Automation is defined as the recording and playback of control values in time. A control in Caustic can either be a knob or a slider, and most controls in Caustic can be automated in your songs and patterns. There are two types of automation in Caustic 3, song automation and pattern automation. First, we'll be looking at song automation. So to be doing song automation, usually you'd have your song at least partially done so that you have something to automate and hear with. So in this case, I've loaded up a snippet from an example song someone posted on the Single Cell Software website, and I'll put a link to the actual song. This is just little bits ripped out, so it's a great little example to show what I want here. Let's start by listening to what we have, and then we'll work with that. So that repeats. The first example of something we might want to automate would be instrument volume. Let's say we wanted to create a fade in or fade out effect on these drums. Song automation can either be recorded live or in kind of stop motion. In this case for a fade, we'll be showing how to do it in stop motion first. So what we want to do is make sure the play cursor is right at zero. So tap in the timeline at zero. Then we'll make sure we're in song mode and press record. Go to our drums volume knob and set it down to zero. There's an orange square that shows around the control to say it's been automated in song mode, orange for song. If we then go to say four bars into our song, place our time cursor there, go back to our control and set it to full volume. Now we can press stop, that will take away our recording. And if we press play on this now, We see our volume on the drums started at zero and ramped up over four bars to full volume as we'd set it. To clear automation, make sure playback is stopped, recording is on, and double tap the knob you want to clear. Confirm and the automation is gone. So another way we could have recorded this is using live recording. So again, we'll make sure the song is gonna start from the beginning and we'll say we'll start our drums from zero. We'll press record and play and now we'll move the knob up by hand. So now if we play that back, So it's a different result. For things like fades where you want full control, it's probably better to do the automation while the song is stopped and just set the time cursor to the time you want and then go set the value you want. But for fast movements or more organic feel on knob movements, um, live recording is probably best. The new thing in Caustic 3 is now you can look at your recorded automation. If you press the view mode button here and go to automation, you'll then get a list of the different machines in your rack and you, if you select, in this case, the mixer, we can see the drums volume has an automation curve on it. The gray squares you see here are automation keyframes and they'll get generated as needed for the control to follow the curve we want. The automation won't follow the keyframes themselves. It won't jump from this value to this value. Instead, it follows the line between the keyframes. So if we set this view to panning, we can see the line that's gonna be followed as the control is being automated in time. In keyframe view, you can select a keyframe to move it, and that will reflect on the curve and how it behaves when it gets played back. You can touch between keyframes to generate new ones, and you can select and delete keyframes the same you would notes or patterns. So in this case, if I wanted to fix up my recorded automation to be closer to the stop motion one I had before, I could remove these two keyframes, say, um, start this one actually at zero as it was meant to, and have this full on one at four bars in instead. OK, 
okay, we can leave that there for now. And let's have a look at pattern automation. So we've got a pad synth up here, generating this ah sound. And what we want to do for the example is create a trance gate, a sort of a chopping sound on it. So first thing I want to do is switch over to pattern mode. And so if I play back this pattern, All right, so we can see the pattern here and that's what we're gonna be working with. Same as the sequencer, the pattern editor has a mode button and if we go from piano roll to automation, we'll see our automation grid. So nothing's been automated in pattern mode on this synth yet. So first thing we're gonna do is press record and then we're gonna automate the volume control on the main thing. And you can see a yellow outline around this control. So yellow on yellow is probably not the best example, but you'll see it if I, for example, just do here. Um, so yellow means it's pattern automated. To clear automation, same thing. Make sure you're in the mode for which you want to clear. Make sure recording is on, but the playback is stopped and double tap the control you want to clear. So we can turn recording off. We've now generated an automation track for the volume knob. And so right now it's just set to the value it had before we automated it. And now we can draw in here. So if I zoom in, you'll see it's a bit different than the song automation. Rather than having keyframes, what we have is essentially a keyframe every 30 second note. So it's more of like a step sequence automation than keyframe automation. So what the control is going to be doing is following these bars over time and setting its value accordingly. So if we set a higher zoom and just draw the value of our volume. You can hear how the volume knob is being changed relative to these bars. So with a zoomed out view like this, it looks more like keyframe automation. You can do some really smooth things. But if we zoom right in, we can see that we can affect 30 second notes at a time and give a lot more control over automation on this knob. So in the case here where I've got some sharp transitions, you'll hear that the volume change isn't actually that sharp. If we look at the knob itself, you'll see it's moving, but it's also kind of blending between the two points. Sometimes you want your automation to be smooth. Sometimes you want it to be sharp. And that's what this smoothing knob does. So it sort of stops things from being modified too quickly. So from dropping from a high value to a low value and vice versa. So if we set our smoothing all the way down to zero, we'll hear these transitions sound a lot sharper. And the knob will move quicker. So for the effect in this example, I'm going to be selecting all my keyframes and instead of deleting in this case we have a reset which sets it back to the knobs default position so for this transgate i'm going to be chopping up the volume every second 30 second step so we get kind of with very sharp smoothing here we get something like this so to get the effect i want i'll actually leave in so i'll do one on off on off on 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 off that's the pattern i want now I want to repeat that for the entire duration of the measure. So what I can do is obviously I can draw this in by hand, but that'd be a bit tedious. So what I can do is do a time selection around the portion I want, hit copy, and then pasting will set the pasted values to replace the values that were there before with the ones I had in my clipboard. So it's effectively just setting the bar positions to the ones in the clipboard. So if I just paste this all the way, um, what will happen is it will paste the duration of it. I'll just keep pasting until it kind of rolls around, then I'll know it's done the whole thing. Okay. So now if I hit play, I get my little trans gate effect on all of the duration of my pattern. And so from there, you know, once you've pasted it, you can modify it. Say I wanted the last ones to be something like this. Um, that would modify that. So the key thing is this is pattern automation. So now when you place this pattern in your song, 
you not only get the notes that come along with it, but you also get the automation that comes along with it. So this makes nice reusable blocks. If your pattern has something like a, you know, filter value changes you want to apply every time you put that pattern in, it's useful to have pattern automation instead of drawing the curve by hand or having to record it for the duration of your song every time that pattern comes in. So it's quite useful for things that repeat. One important thing to note is you can record song automation and pattern automation for control, but pattern automation will take precedence. So if the pattern is present that has the automation on that control, the song automation will get overridden and you'll be hearing the pattern automated values. Once the pattern gets, you know, once the pattern is done playing, uh, it will go back to the song automated version. So that's pretty much it for automation. Uh, so the new thing now is pattern automation and hopefully with these new tools and editing tools, you'll get a lot more control of how you can create automation and give control to your songs.